that, I'm going to start our presentation. Welcome to an introduction to Focus 2, Searchy's new and revolutionary dual camera forensic optical comparison examination system. Here's the Focus 2 system, designed for an investigator to be able to search and examine evidence, capture, compare, and annotate images of the evidence, and prepare those images for submission to APHIS systems, and compile and build your case files into court presentations, all in one integrated system. Today we are going to provide a brief history of Searchy's work in the forensic optical enhancement field and touch on where Focus 2 fits in, provide details and key features of the Focus 2 system, and finally go in depth and touch on how to use Focus 2. Use of magnification by humans dates back hundreds of years including the use of loops and magnifiers and the examination of fingerprints starting in the 20th century. Since 1927, Searchy has provided solutions to help law enforcement around the world in their mission to solve cases and administer justice, including magnifiers, loops, classification disks, and more. We listen to the problems our customers face. You have questions? We work to provide answers and develop and deliver solutions that meet your needs. Magnification was great. But many years ago, we were asked, can we get bigger kit pictures and we can, get, can we get them side by side for comparison's sake? That led to projection systems like the FX8B. Big images are great. Can we get a live feed to work with? With analog video feeds, the FX10A allowed for the examination of evidence, first in black and white, later in color, still popular to view in black and white. Live feeds were great, but with the advent of digital, magnification could be even greater and get a sharper image and they wanted to be able to save the image and work with it. That led us to a system like the FXE350. People love what the FXE350 could do for them but they said one camera is great, two cameras would be even better. Can we get two live feeds to work with? Can we save those images and can we work with them? That led us to the Focus 2 that we're talking about and demonstrating for you today. When we're developing products like Focus 2, we listen to and engage professionals in the field. We built upon the two camera request. And we began to think beyond just latent print examination and, and, and see what we could do in terms of developing a system that would help for working with all types of evidence examination. Have that case building documentation built within it. Be available to do training and peer reviews and, and ultimately have everything available to put together for court presentations. And that's how we created Focus 2, and we're proud to have it available for everyone to learn a little bit more about in the next few minutes. So let's get into the system itself. The Focus 2 system consists of two 8-megapixel cameras that provide live independent free feeds integrated with Focus 2 CSI PIX-based software via proprietary searchy menu the cameras are mounted on articulating arms that allow you great flexibility in terms of moving around and working with different kinds of evidence and we'll go more in depth on this later. There's a stylus based walk-on monitor that allows the examiner to make annotations, notes and more within the software as you build a case file either with the stylus right on the screen or with the traditional mouse and keyboard configuration. And once again, we'll go into a little bit more detail on this as we get into demoing the system. You have the computer, which is set up with the right video card and configured, so you don't need to worry about anything other than removing the system from the boxes, getting everything hooked up and plugged in, started up, and then you're going to be ready to roll. The cameras are mounted on a solid steel base with matte finish and included gray resin mat that allows for the base to have magnetic properties to hold your evidence in place and provide optimal conditions for photography while working with integrated lights in the system. A little bit more about the camera assembly. As we mentioned before, each camera operates independently and is mounted on articulating arms. From top to bottom you have a convenient handle for maneuvering the camera, a light selector that allows you to choose between the integrated white, 455 nanometer blue, and 395 nanometer long wave UV lights. A dimmer to allow for adjustment of the lights for you to arrive at the optimal setting 
the aperture and zoom rings for the camera so that you can operate it like any regular DSLR or other adjustable camera and a level bubble so that you can keep the camera at the all important 90 degrees while working with it. As we flip the, the assembly on its end you can see that underneath we have a bank of LED lights with white, blue, and long wave UV. And these lights also can work in conjunction with included barrier filters. We provide yellow and orange barrier filters to work with the light sources and the best thing about the filters is that they are magnetic and they mount easily over the camera lens so that you can flip it onto the assembly, you're ready to work, you can pull it right off and they store in a storage bay on the back of the camera base so everything's all included within the system for you to be able to, to set up and be ready to work with right away. As we mentioned before, the cameras are mounted on articulating arms that allow for 180 degree rotation away from the front. The cameras can also be rotated 90 degrees on their axes to allow for horizontal viewing when needed. The cameras each have approximately 13 inches of vertical adjustment and are powerful enough to acquire a clear image from a good distance away as shown in the photo on the left. And we'll be demonstrating more with the cameras as we go into the second half of the webinar today. As previously mentioned, the base and the included mat provide optical background, optimal background surfaces while working with many types of evidence that can be easily anchored with the, mag, the included magnets. The camera assemblies are fully mounted and ready to have the cords plugged into the computer, turned on, and ready to go. You can be ready to work in mere minutes. The stylus-based Wacom monitor gives you clear viewing capability while working with the live camera feeds and the flexibility to work with the stylus or with the mouse and keyboard to annotate, document, save, and compile your annotated images in the case files for later review, to send off to an APHIS database, or to build your court presentation all within the integrated software. Just a couple of quick examples. In the picture on the left, we are working with a 10 print card through the left camera feed and a cyanoacrylate fume bottle through the right camera. We used long wave UV and the included yellow filter on the right hand camera to block out the background noise and capture a latent print in detail from the bottle as represented in the right hand image on the monitor. From here the capture, captured images can be worked with within the software. In this example we're demonstrating the flexibility of the cameras. The right camera is kilted at an angle to align with the cap of a juice carton. This carton has also been fumed and a latent print was identified on the cap. The best image resulted from using an orange filter with 455 nanometer blue lights as represented in the monitor feed on the right hand side. Next up, a physical tour of Focus 2. They also rotate. And then the camera itself can also rotate 90 degrees in each direction. These sit on two arms, so two cameras. It also sits on a magnetic base, so you can see from the magnets. And it comes with this gray cover. As far as each camera, there is a light control for the light bank that's in this unit here. We have white, blue, 455, and UV, 395. Each of the camera units also has a dimmer, so we can turn the light down, or we can increase the light. On each camera, there's a manually adjustable focus. In addition to that, there is an aperture that is adjustable for each camera. That is the physics of the entire system, from base to articulating arms to the lights, the dimmer, and the adjustments that you would do for the camera. We also have the filters which are magnetic, 
that easily are attachable and easily removable. No screwing required. You don't have to screw this into any fine threads or worry about ruining the threads. Just easily puts in by the magnet. And one final feature, we have the bubble level. So when we want to actually capture the photograph, we want to make sure that we are 90 degrees to the table. We can actually use this level to make sure that the camera is at a 90 degree angle. Now let's move on to the live feed. This is the live desktop of the CSI Pix, which also includes the live image bridge that will come from this Focus 2. When we start, the Focus 2 screen looks like this. You can start a live image. And we can adjust our lights, our focus, anything that we may need to do. So on the left, we have an image that's taken from a 10 print card. On the right, as you can see as I move it around, we have an image of a latent print. So let's take a look very quickly at some of the controls that we have on the screen. On each of these, we can control gain. So this is like the electronic aperture of each camera. As you can see, the light increases as the gain increases. We can also increase the black level, which really is more of a contrast control. We can also reduce or increase exposure, but because we're mainly working with static images, uh, exposure really doesn't have a lot to play with. This is more in the lines of when things are moving. When you start CSI Pix and the Focus 2 window, it requires you to do a white balance, which I've already completed for this session. But depending on how much ambient room light you may have, from cool white fluorescent, daylight, or other things, you would want to do this white balance to make sure that your color rendition is correct. So the system requires you to do it before you start. Now that we have a live image, uh, as I said, we can adjust things like the aperture. We can also adjust the light source. When we want to save this, we now have to stop the live image. This will now give us a static image for each window. You can now save these as raw files, just like you had taken them from a camera, and then transport this information over to Photoshop or any other photo type manipulation software. We can also do capture. And the capture allows us to work within the CSI PIX software. For now, I'm going to go back to the live feed. I'll show you one more feature. If, for example, we have a color that we are showing on a latent, this is fluorescent powder, and we were to look at that with blue and with our orange filter. We know in general that most latent print examiners do not like to work in fluorescent powders, so this allows us to change the color. We can go to grayscale, we can also invert the colors, and so we can either have a white on black background or a black on light background with a fluorescent powder. As you can see, comparison of these two images is much easier than having to compare a fluorescent image. Now let's go back to the old latent. We're going to remove 
the filter. We're going to change the light source back to the white light. Let's adjust the gain since we have so much more light now. And what we're going to do is we're going to set both of these up for image capture so that we can use these in the CSI picks later. I'm going to adjust the camera on the latent so that I can get a much clearer picture that fills the window. Okay, now that I have that in place, I'm going to place a scale with the latent print. I'm also going to place a scale with the 10 print card. Well, typically, the 10 print card would be a scanned image, either coming from the APHIS system or from actually scanning a 10 print card. So therefore, the scale would have to be introduced later. Since we're looking at a live image, we can introduce these scales prior to capturing this image. I'm going to adjust this one so that we can get the maximum amount of print into the window and also be able to identify the scale. Now we can stop and we can capture. As you can see, we've captured the latent in the right and the 10 print card in the left. Now we can demonstrate the CSI PIX comparator. If we go under File, each case can be set up as a separate case number. Under that case number, we can store all kinds of information. Latents, 10 print cards, photos from the crime scene, footprint images, tire marks, blood patterns, documents. So we can store all of the images for an entire case. You can create this anywhere on your desktop or in a network file. And then it will create those folders for you. It will ask you if you want to copy anything in at this point. Now we're going to start fresh. So I have two images. You can see is the square highlights. I'm working with the left image. If it's the right, I'm working with the right image. To save the image, you can go Save Selected Image. The system will allow you to save that as a variety of formats. You can save them as JPEG, TIFF, which is a lossless version, bitmaps. You can save it as JPC or JP2, JP2 being the new JPEG 2000 wavelet format. It also allows you to save this image once you have converted it to the 500 or 1000 PPI as a WSQ file for submission to the federal APHIS system. So I will save this as a 10 print. I can go to my latent and save it. Again, save it in my right file. Now I've saved these images. Under the file, I also have other options to bring images in. So if I wanted to close the right image, I can actually open a NIST file, which is a converted 500 or 1000 WSQ file. I could open a PDF. I can also acquire an image from a scanner. So if you have a scanner that you're currently scanning your 10 print cards or other latents, uh, this accepts them also. So I can work with everything from the Focus 2 and everything that I may have available to me in the office. 
So let's reopen the right image. The edit functions are typical. Undo of the last functions and copy to the clipboard. Enhancements allow us to do some of the basic photography enhancements that you would have in things like Photoshop. You can level, or which is basically a balance function. You can manually level different colors. Do brightness, we can invert the colors. We can sharpen or smooth, which would change the image. Uh, we can do median balance. We can do white balance. We can change to grayscale, which typically in this mode does not do a great job. It's much better to do before we convert. We can remove background by eliminating different colors. And we can also enhance things that are just text or image for written. This is the feature that we really want to get into. This is where we can do annotations between the two prints. And as you can see, there are different annotation options. Dots, circles, a freehand drawing, text, magnified view will show you how to magnify a small section. The arrows, the lines, and then ridge ends and bifurcations, which are just latent print examiner evidence. But it's as easy as determining how big we want this to be, uh, how opa opaque we want it to be, and then what color. So if I find features in each of these prints that are of interest, it's as easy as putting a dot in both locations. It could be a circle. It could be text. We have the swig fast symbols. So there's a ridge end, a bifurcation, and we can put those throughout the image and match them up. We can also do a magnified view. There's a zoom factor of 200%, and we can increase or decrease the circle size. And what this means is if I want this small region here to be magnified, I can increase my circle. And you can see how the image is now magnified for that small region. And this can be done throughout any of the images to bring in detail. Circles can be increased or decreased and so can the zoom factor. If we don't like what we're seeing, we have edit mode. Here's where if I put the circle in the wrong place, then I can move it. If I want to undo, just undo. Back to draw mode. Um, we can also add a border, or we can undo the border. Yeah, the camera. One of the unique features of the Focus 2 software and how we've actually integrated this is we've used a stylus. You can see the stylus pen. This comes on a touchscreen monitor by Wacom. And so even though I touch this with my fingers, it doesn't do anything. It only works with the stylus. But anything that I wanted to do from the drawing screen, 
I can do with the stylus pen. And now you can see that we can put a pen down and we can treat this just like we used to do with China markers on a plastic sheet of acetate paper. What also is nice is on the text entry, if I want to enter text, I can just write it in. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back through some of some of the more functions we talked about. Annotate. Let's talk about calibration. If you have a very clear ruler, if I were to try to calibrate this picture so that I know that it is one inch is one inch or one centimeter is one centimeter, uh, we can attempt to automatically calibrate. If it cannot do the automatic calibration, we can default to manual calibration. This is where I can determine from tick mark to tick mark what the distance is. And this will allow me to set this by manually typing in what that distance is. So now we know one centimeter is one centimeter. We can do the same thing in this photo. Go to manual calibration. Go from one distance to the other. I know that that is 10 millimeters. Plug that in, and it's now calibrated. So now when I go to measure function, which is right here, everything in the image can now be measured based on the pixels and the calibration that I've done. There's also a dewarping function. This is if there's a rectangle, if there's something that is warped or out of out of sync, you can actually straighten it out with a rectangle. Since we do not really have anything that's warped, it's very hard to demonstrate that. We can do the rotation if we had a print that is actually misaligned. We can rotate that print either by moving a slider or if we know where the center line actually is, then we can actually put a rotation line. So if we wanted this to be the straight up and down, we tell CSI picks that and it straightens the print out for us. If this is what we were presented and we wanted it reoriented, That would allow us to do that. We can also pan, move either of the images. And we can either flip vertically or horizontally any of the images. You can crop one inch by one inch region, one by two. 1.655, there's different choices, and you can also create a window that you want to crop out of the image. And we can also resample. So if this image is to be submitted to an APHIS, once I've calibrated, since I already have done that, and we know what one centimeter is one centimeter, I can either resample this as a 500 pixels per inch or a 1,000 pixels per inch image and of course without the annotations. Once this is done, then this image can be saved as a WSQ or whatever format's required uh, to submit to an APHIS system. If there is a reason to have to do a custom, that also gives you the option of setting what the PPI needs to be, and I'll resize that for the custom PPI. The zoom function is the same thing that we're getting with the mouse only from a menu feature. We can do two times, do 16, and we can also zoom out. The measure function here, as we looked at earlier, is where we can measure within. 
We can also look at just the left image. We can look at just the right image. Or we can go back to our comparison. Then all of this can be saved. We can save it with and without annotations. Okay. That is a very quick overview of the focus, its functions, the functions of the capture system, the functions of the CSI comparator. And is there any questions from the audience now that we've uh, gone through this? Joseph's question was, so if you took the pictures from the crime scene, how is this put into the system? Uh, the, this, um, the case management or the case files are, are put onto wherever you want them to be. So those files are created in the uh, Windows file system. So if you have those on a network or if you have those on your local computer, and of course, anything that you have on the computer that's in a picture format, if you wanted to bring that up into CSI Pix, that allows you to import those files as PDF, JPEGs, uh, whatever you may have saved them as. So as far as the uh, pictures from Focus or the pictures from the crime scene, they all can be stored in the same type of Windows file. Today. Um, if you have any questions or would like any more information, please feel free to contact Bob Lush. He is, uh, his email address is on the screen and his phone number. Uh, we're going to hang out for a few more minutes on here in case there are any other questions that people would like to share with us. But thank you very much for taking time with us today to go through the Focus 2. We hope that you found it informative and that you will find some interest in this product and we'd be glad to quote it to you. Thank you.